Mr. Goh, things are starting to look up for the aviation sector. SIA announced recently that you've narrowed your losses in the last financial year. Now, when do you expect your operating numbers to return to pre-pandemic levels? And are you confident that you can close this year in the black? So, as you can see in our uh, recent press release, that we are actually increasing our capacity uh, going forward. Uh, this quarter, we'll reach about 61% pre-COVID. Uh, by the end of next quarter, to 67% of pre-COVID. So you can be sure that we will be ready to um, uh, deploy our resources to meet whatever travel demand there is out there. And you can be sure that we will be first off the block to do so. Are you confident that you can make a profit in this current financial year? A, no, we don't give projections, but you'll get to know. And can I just ask you, what is your strategy for uh, recovery? Are you, for example, planning enhancements for your products uh, on the ground and in the air as well? The way we have been preparing throughout this pandemic is really to ensure that we have the uh, key resources uh, whenever the recovery were to take place. So, uh, as you can see, at this point, we are operating about 61% of our pre-pandemic capacity. But if you look at the airlines in this part of the world, on average, they are operating about 20%. So we are, in some sense, ahead of them. And that's the reason why we are able to um, meet, up with, meet the uh, pent-up demand that is out there and be the first to actually tap on those demand opportunities. And what are some of the markets that you're focusing on going into this phase of recovery? So it's very much, uh, up to this point, dependent on when the borders are open and when some of the travel restrictions are removed. So when the travel restrictions for uh, Europe has been removed and that for the US has been eased, uh, you find that there is a huge demand uh, both to and from those regions. And we'll continue to, to see that. You are now seeing a lot more uh, borders being opened in Asia. And that's the reason why you see that we are deploying significant capacities uh, to these countries as well. But you know, Mr. Go, China was such an important market for SIA pre-pandemic. Can SIA you know, fully recover without China? So you're correct. Uh, for the SIA group, we used to serve uh, 29 points in the greater China area. Uh, that actually makes us the second biggest foreign uh, non-Chinese based carrier in terms of number of points. Um, it is an important market. However, we are also seeing opportunities in uh, other places. And in some cases, we are actually having capacity deployed that is more than what it was before. Take uh, New York, for example. We are now serving New York three times a day. Pre-pandemic, we used to serve maximum twice a day. So you will see that there will be other opportunities and uh, we will be ready when China uh, finally opens its border. Are you seeing similar recovery in the premium and non-premium sectors or is one uh, sort of moving ahead of the other? At this point in time, we do see uh, strength across all cabins. Um, and you know, there's this concept called premium leisure. Uh, something that I think was maybe not talked about as much pre-pandemic. What is premium leisure and this is, is, is this like a new segment for Singapore Airlines? In the um, initial period when uh, borders begin to open, uh, we do not see as much business travel, but we do see uh, people who are travelling on non-business uh, purposes, but on premium classes. So uh, that is, I suppose, what you will call premium leisure. Uh, these are people who might be travelling to reconnect with loved ones uh, that they have not seen for a while. Uh, we do see strong, com strong demand in that sector as well. And what are your forward bookings looking like for business travel in particular? At this point in time, after the full reopening uh, in, in, the, in Singapore and also in some of the major markets that we operate to, like Europe, uh, we're actually seeing strong pickup in the business uh, travel demand as well. And it is in terms of the uh, proportion relative to uh, non-business travel is actually approaching that or pre-pandemic pre level. I would imagine though that some of that is pent up demand. You know, uh, business executives who have not been able to catch up the last two years are sort of taking 
uh, the opportunity to do so now. But when we talk to businesses, you know, concepts like work from home, uh, you know, uh, going on remote calls, that seems to be a bit of a permanent feature. Are you concerned that mm. long term uh, this might impact your business, uh, given that uh, the business travel segment is such an important part of your revenues? At this point in time, we do not know how this uh, demand for uh, business travel, how long it will last in terms of this initial pent-up that you mentioned. But we are seeing strong demand going forward, at least for the next few months. Um, one need to also be cognizant that uh, Asia as an economy is actually growing faster than most other economies in the world, which means that the econ economic and business activities will be more, and there will presumably from there uh, stronger demand for business travel as well. So there is this other compensating factor. You know, there's a lot of excitement. Um, people are all eager to, uh, you know, fly, go on holidays. But at the same time, we're also um, getting uh, feedback from some of our readers that our SIA fares are so high and there are some who accuse you of almost profiteering at their expense. What do you say to travellers who accuse you of that? There's certainly uh, a case whereby the airfares are actually at a level where demand and supply uh, meet. So, uh, but if you were to, and, and typically for uh, air travel and for that matter, most other uh, uh, bookings, the nearer you are to the departure date, the fares tend to be higher because seats are, are taken up. Uh, but if you were to look further um, out, you know, for a few months or half a year and so on and plan in advance, you would still be able to find very competitive fares. So people should plan for their holidays earlier and not wait for the last minute. I think that will be uh, highly encouraged because it's not just about your airfare content, it's also about your land content. If you want to book um, a place at the, your favourite resort, you may want to do so earlier. Right. Now Mr Goh, even as we speak of recovery, the industry in general is facing a manpower crunch. Uh, do you have enough cabin crew, uh, you know, ground staff, people in customer service, to be able to handle this increase in your capacity? Fortunately for us, um, at the outset, uh, we have determined that we want to do all possible to retain all our core uh, resources. That would include our people, uh, not just crew, but also our ground uh, talents. And uh, we have been able to retain most of them so uh, the immediate uh, expansion of our network does not uh, bring about a constraint to, to our manpower uh, requirement at the moment. There's been some feedback though that uh, when it comes to customer service, there have been some lapses. How, how would you address that? So uh, perhaps you are referring to, for example, the uh, high volumes of call at our call centre. In, uh, we actually, in, even for the case of the call centre, we have been planning ahead to man the call centre at a higher level than our capacity. For example, in, uh, in April, our call centre manning level was almost at 110% of pre-COVID, even though our capacity was only at about 60% of pre-COVID. And during that month, our average call volume went up to 130% of pre-COVID. Uh, on some days, even 160%. Uh, I can understand why uh, some of customers are calling more often because there's just so many frequent changes in the travel requirements and border control. But um, we, we do apologise for our customers who have faced all this issue and uh, we are actually doing all possible and I believe the uh, situation will be rectified very soon. Have you had a holiday in the last two years or so? <laughs> and if not, are you planning one? Not yet, but I am planning one. Hopefully, I can take a week off somewhere um, to a resort in Asia somewhere. Have you decided where you need to uh, book early to avoid uh, high Yes, fares? yes, yes. I will certainly book early. At this point in time, I have not decided where yet. Okay, Mr Goh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me.